Oh. Yeah, he wasn't a very liked person. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome back to another episode, episode number 32 of the Detroit Local. Mm-hmm. Kari, man, what's going on, bud? Uh, nothing, man. Just uh, beaming in the beamer, just beaming. Dude, did you send uh, that email to Scott about getting any free tickets to all those events? Uh, soon. Yeah, like immediately, <laughs> right? I'm just, I'm just going to make up an email address. And Same like, here. Hi, I'm Bike Matinger. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a Kari one. It'll be a Rufio Jones one. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send one in from uh, my kid. Yeah, I'll, I'll have it covered. Yeah, so if you're just tuning into this episode, uh, our previous episode, number 31, Scott from Dine Drink Detroit offered up 10 free tickets to a, a whole slew of events that are uh, going on. So it was the Taco Showdown, the Burger Brawl, the Pizza Throwdown, mm-hmm. the uh, Drink Pink event, and then he wants you to go purchase a ticket for the dinner at Frame Detroit with the uh, guy, the chef, from Top Chef Mexico. Rodolfo. Rodolfo. Thank you very much. So uh, his email is email at dinedrinkdetroit.com if you want a free ticket to any of those events. So uh, just make sure you reference TDL, the Detroit local, in the email. It won't help you win. Yeah, I mean, it might. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It might. So, But all right, joining us today, uh, we're, we're going to switch it up. Usually we, we plug you into all the different scenes, kind of what's going on, but uh, we're going to take a little more of a deep dive into... A Detroit historical uh, landmark. Wait, was that was that a pun? A deep yeah, dive? was that on purpose? It's, it's not. It's not because a deep dive. It would be a very shallow dive. <laughs> yeah, in a fountain. Okay. Well, well done. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a media, a moderate dive into the <laughs> uh, into a Detroit historical landmark and a Detroit historical figure. So joining us today is uh, we have two guests, Mr. Robert Carpenter and Mr. Nolan Serafin. What's up, gentlemen? Doing great so yeah. far. Yeah, so far so good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we Absolutely. were working on the fountain all day today. We had some volunteers out there, and we came out here to talk about the fountain a little bit. Yeah, so Robert and Nolan, you guys are both uh, engineers with DTE, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we're both electrical engineers. And what is your tie to the fountain at uh, Belle Isle, the James Scott Memorial Fountain? Well, in 05, I was asked to do some video work for Super Bowl. And then right after Super Bowl, the city wasn't looking so neat and pretty, and Roger Penske said, let's create a new group called uh, Clean Downtown. And again, I was asked by my president at DT Energy to get my interns involved on helping create a new organization called Clean Downtown, where we cleaned up the city proper. Right, and that was in 2005? That was in actually five to six. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Grand Prix came in in 07, and the... The fountain has three areas, the main fountain that most people see in the pictures, and then it has an upper and lower cascades. The lower cascades were uh, in in very great disrepair. Sure. So they invited me out, uh, Bob Buckler and Roger Penske, and they invited me to have my students come out and clean it up. And unfortunately, I kind of heard fix it up yeah i'm sure that's what they were leaning on too like you know go ahead and take a look at yeah, it yeah and wink, if wink. yeah yeah if you know if well, you want to you know. clean it up by physically fixing it by all means so be it yeah well as an engineer i mean you don't want to have something not working right, right. so you you fix yeah. vacuum cleaners you fix your car you fix a fountain so anyways i got involved <laughs> i guess that's how that works with with my uh interns we brought some interns out we started cleaning things up and then I got very curious on how this thing works, and eventually I got it working, only to later ha- actually have an, have an older guy come up to the fountain. He was resting his hands on the handrail over there, and uh, he seemed a little distraught and some tears coming down his eyes. And So I went up to him and asked if he was okay because it looked like he was pretty concerned. And his words were, I didn't think I'd live to ever see this fountain running again. Wow. So it turns out that it was probably somewhere 12, 15, maybe 20 years that that section of the fountain, the upper and lower cascades, had not run. I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, I don't recall a time when it was running before recently. So the the main fountain generally runs, generally, but the upper and lower cascades, a lot of people don't know. It's a very important section of the fountain. So that's one of the things that I got up and running in 07 and 08. That was probably... I'd say that's probably 80% of the effort on getting the fountain up and running and Mm -hmm. getting it all cleaned up. So we didn't have any hydraulic prints, any mechanical prints. 
It was just kind of those blueprints. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Governing. Not not an engineer. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a Draw- drawings. Ah, drawings. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, you're just okay. kind of you know the pipe goes into the into the dirt and where does it go? So you have to kind of struggle with that a little bit. But anyways, it was a pretty steep learning curve to figure this thing out. At that time, the city of Detroit was running the fountain, turning it on and off, and it changed hands and time had passed. And I went back out there in 2012. Uh, the Grand Prix took a little hiatus for right. a couple of years. And when I went back there, we cleaned it up again, and it changed hands to the DNR. So they are currently now responsible for operating Belle Isle. The fountain is part of that, as is the aquarium and many other features. Mm-hmm. And it's my understanding that the aquarium is about a— uh, if you ask the people what do they go see first, it's about, I think it's 73% of the people say they go and see the fountain first. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the first thing you see when you get off the bridge, yep. you make yep. a right, and it's right there, right? So uh, Yeah, actually, the fountain was really designed such that you were supposed to be able to stand in downtown Detroit, downtown proper, and you should see the center jet. Now, it was originally designed to go up about 110 feet. I don't know where they were measuring from, probably uh, <laughs> more like the ground level, not the top of Seems the jet. Seems like a pretty strong jet to be <laughs> shooting up 110 <laughs> feet. Goodness, that sounds <laughs> violent. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> You know, it, it's a 100-horsepower motor that runs just a single 4-inch uh, nozzle, and it pumps 1,700 gallons uh, a minute. Wow. So, yeah, we, we can get it up to, I think, around 40, 50, 60 feet, that range. I've never measured it, kind of an est- estimate. But I'm guessing if the impeller was uh, fresh, the one that's in there now is heavily worn, and we're going to get that replaced someday. But full throttle, I I think we could definitely get into that 80-foot range. and then the Hell, yeah, let's the, open her up and see what this baby can yeah. do. They're going to see be, us in Plymouth. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. Right? But uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that are attached to that jet that I'm a little concerned about. I mean, uh, it is a 1925 fountain. It was really commissioned by James Scott before he died. So, yeah, so it's, it's the James Scott... James Memorial Scott, Mer- right? Yeah, which G- brings us to our next question: Who is James Scott? So he, Nolan's over here he, laughing. It's like, a good story. Yeah, yeah. Robert tells it best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, he, he. People didn't like him. Actually, I think nobody liked him but himself. So. Yeah, and when I met you, I said, "Who is James Scott?" And you said, "He was a womanizer and a yep. carouser." And I said, "Seems like my kind of guy." Yeah, <laughs> <I> just. <laughs> So. But not a good dude, right? People people thought he was inappropriate. Uh, he was old money, so he didn't necessarily earn all the money himself. But in the end, he he um, he wanted a statue to himself, so he left money behind to build a fountain and a statue to him. So he wasn't like a Detroit historical figure. He was just a guy with money. Gambler. gambler. Oh, gambler. Yeah. yeah. Womanizer. Gambler. Yeah. Womanizer. Drinker. <laughs> Yeah, wow. I again it was old money, so he was just out spending money, not necessarily making sure. money from from my understanding. So when he passed away, he left all of his money in a in a trust, and the trust was to build a statue to him, which seemed very appropriate. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, some people had suggested a statue that was one inch high and and Life that size. yeah <laughs> that that didn't go over real big. So, anyways, lots of time passed until the mid nineteen. 19- 1915, 1918, somewhere in that range, I'm not real sure. But the family finally said, enough is enough, give us the money or build what he asked you to build. But by that time, his uh, money had amassed quite... Sure, just sitting in an account or something. Yeah, I think it was actually about 10 times bigger at that point, from 250,000 to 2.5 million are the numbers I've seen. I'm not an expert on it. So they ended up building the fountain that we see, they commissioned Cass Gilbert, who had uh, done a lot of other significant works works throughout the United States. And he designed it, and they started building it, and they used white Vermont marble, which actually there were three quarries back then. Oh, white Vermont marble. Yep. And there's only one quarry left in Vermont. I mean, when the marble ends, it ends. So uh, we actually built an ADA ramp that you can now get to the fountain if you're a wheelchair or have a stroller or something like right, that. Right. And it's actually surrounded by original white Vermont marble that came from Vermont, and it matches the fountain exactly. It's absolutely spectacular. It so, is. It's gorgeous. So the Scott Money built this absolutely wonderful um, largest marble fountain in Michigan. Yeah. 
and so here I am I working actually, on it. I now. actually wrote down marble <laughs> question mark yes. in my notes. Yeah. Is that marble? Yeah, it's yeah. Vermont though. Yeah, Vermont. Is it is this funny? Like, you know, I people can people can be bad or jerks. So let's just say jerks. He sounds like a jerk, right? But something good did eventually come from it. So like just just for future reference to everybody that's listening, you don't you don't have to always dunk on everybody. They don't <laughs> They don't necessarily have the best intentions, but sometimes they can leave good stuff behind. And, and, and as we heard earlier, whether on purpose or by complete it, it, accident, exactly. Again, it might it, sometimes it works like that, but we we ended up getting a very uh, beautiful landmark out of it. So yeah, and there is uh, there is actually a statue off to the side of it of him, correct? Yeah, they put it actually over on the east side because the prevailing winds in Michigan are westerly. So they come out of the west, go across the fountain, pick up some water, and splash him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> And That's great. Did, wait, is this seriously why that, that was, was designed that like that? That was purely intentional, yeah. <laughs> Put it out by the, the horse stables, you know? <laughs> Jeez. And they also made it so kids can kind of climb on it, and he did not like children either, so. Man, that is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like every side eye possible yep. they can do to oh, yeah. Just twist that knife. Yeah. And now, I, I do, for a second, want to want to jump back. Um, so how does, it, how does it feel uh, to be an engineer and then, like, see your job brings someone like the amount of joy that you that you you know spoke about yeah. earlier like you know you I, I feel like you know it's it's a it's a job where you're just you're just doing things to get stuff done and and like you said you want to just uh work and make it the best that it can be in your eyes but when you and you step back and see that you've brought somebody joy from what you've done like how did that make you feel one day i was looking at the fountain, a lot of people walking around, and, of course, they have absolutely no idea who I am. Right. And there was this little kid that walked up to the fountain. He couldn't quite reach the water in the first tier. Right. So he struggled and wiggled, and eventually he could reach the water, and he was splashing in the water, and his little teeny feet were about six inches off the ground. Right. Just flailing <laughs> in the air. And this kid was just having an absolute grand time. had absolutely no idea of any of the background information regarding this fountain but it's just really enjoyable to see the people that just accept the fountain for what it is right right it's well, just something to have a good time it was actually 1925 you didn't have air conditioning systems so that lower tier it misted the air it right. made it cooler for yeah. all the folks that came to that area it was a real gathering place grand prix has supported me immensely for all of these years through equipment that they provide for cranes, forklifts, pumps, yeah, pumps, yeah. yeah lots of equipment, and that has really been a, a real boost to me to keep this thing going. Right. Yeah, because so, it's run by pretty much donation only to get all these new parts, right? Pretty much, yeah. We were given a, a grant last year. There's an event with Grand Prix called uh, Grand Premier, and last year they gave out a $400,000 grant through Belle Isle Conservancy. They're the caretakers of the funds right now. And then from there I'm drawing off for plumbing and electrical supplies, things of that nature. Uh, the DNR has hired an architect to work on tuck pointing, and some of the marble is starting to slip and move. Ice is white Vermont marble. Mm -hmm. White, very white Vermont yeah. marble. Yeah, some of it's actually orange and There's tan. A trick to getting it that white again. Right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, we did some uh, treatment this morning. So tier two and tier three are uh, actually kind of difficult to look at in the sunshine because they, it's like looking in a mirror. Right. Right. So you can actually get a, a suntan under your <laughs> eyeballs and under your chin, and sure. it's just the reflection is really. Quite amazing, but uh, yeah, contributions, donations, support has been uh, absolutely fantastic. I work for DT Energy, and I've been given the opportunity to continue working on that uh, year after year, as I am doing this year. Yeah. So it takes us uh, about six weeks to get it up and running. Sure, and that's that's actually how we got this whole interview set up. I was just out and about on the island, walking around, and right. noticed uh, Robert and and, and Nolan. Just carrying like saws and walking around the fountain. I was yeah. like, "Oh, what's going on over here?" <laughs> like, and, and uh, I saw the 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 door that goes to the underground part of it. Yeah, the control room. The underneath. control room. Yep. I'm like, I'm poking my head in. I'm, right. like, I'm like waiting for him to be like, "Hey, scram!" You know. And he's like, <laughs> "Robert's like, hey man, like I'm Robert. I'm Nolan. Do you, you want to take a look?" 
like, really? Right, right. Like, yeah, come on in. So I'm taking, like, I'm walking in front of them, like, you know, I sure hope that these guys are who they say they are. (laughs) Because if not, I'm walking right into an underground lair. a terrible trap. Built in, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's a dark stone tunnel. I'm like, oh, what have I done? (laughs) Nolan, how how did you get set up doing this? Uh, So actually, for me, I used to be a student intern. Well, yeah, you uh, said student. You said student. So you got do you teach or uh, no? So Robert used to have a student program uh, way way back in the day, and right up until you know he's getting ready to retire pretty soon. But uh, upwards of 120 students that worked for him at one time, and I was one of the students that I was fortunate enough. He trusted me enough back in 2012. I'd been an intern for about a year or so at DTE, mm-hmm. and he said, "Hey, you know." I've been working on this fountain a couple years ago. Right. They're bringing the Grand Prix back to the island, and I need some help. I you need know, some so free help. Yeah, free, yeah. <laughs> you're working for me. You know, this is a pretty good test to yeah. see, you know, how you work out. Absolutely. So, uh, went out there the first day, had no idea what I was getting myself into, and uh, just day one started learning about the pumps, right. learning about the fountain, how it operates, and. Um, he said, start picking up trash, start, mm-hmm. you know, cleaning out some of the muck, everything else. And Earn your stripes, man. Ever since then, I've been coming back every single year. Right. I, I've since gotten hired in at DTE um, as an engineer back in 2014 right. and have kind of risen up through the ranks and every year just keep coming back. And I don't know. Robert says I'm glutton for punishment. <laughs> yeah. I probably have to agree. Is, is Nolan your successor to the fountain uh, to the work th- here? <laughs> <laughs> Breaking them in? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because, I, I mean, honestly, like, I, I do see what appears to be, like, real joy on your face. So yeah. I, I, that's, I just, I, I don't know, man. I get I get excited when, like, people actually like their jobs. And that's what it, that's what it looks like. That's what I'm, I'm, that's the energy I'm feeling from you too. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's, well, yeah, it's, it's a passion for it. It's, it's awesome. I yeah. mean, when we get the, the opportunity, like Robert said, you see people that are really moved and when we're out there and we're working and we're dead tired, we're ready to go in and someone's kind of peeking into the control room. It's like, ah, <laughs> this guy, it was right, like right. Let's give him a quick tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they might be, you know, they might be from out of town. Yeah. They could be, this could be their first trip to Michigan, first trip to Belle Isle. Right. And you hear so many, interesting stories about you know people that uh, were here when they were younger or heard mm-hmm. about it or never been to uh, the island before right. and we get the opportunity to take them and see something that people don't really get to see underneath them. absolutely yeah 35 years i've been seeing that fountain never once got to go in and, and explore the under thing and i had no idea who hey, james scott even was never you know? thought about it <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like i i, I would have never like until you said that it was even a possibility i wouldn't have even thought about the the underground uh you know part workings of, yeah like, yeah we got to so. get you down under there man so that's okay that's going, yeah. I, i'm glad you said that because you guys were mentioning tours and uh robert we've chatted in the past i would love to kind of help us both out here and see if you would be willing to uh work with me and put together a tour uh by donation so people would make uh i don't know we'll just 20 dollar donation or something per person uh that'll go straight to the fountain fund Come down, I'll set it all up, and you just give them, give them a tour. Yeah, people can donate to anything that they would like to through the Belle Isle Conservancy. They're the ones that are helping the entire Belle Isle arena of things that are just really amazing, especially the aquarium. And uh, they can direct the funds to any particular feature that they would like. And uh, I will just, uh, I'll give a tour to anybody. I don't mind that. I'll still be a DT employee in June and... I don't mind giving tours. It's kind of fun to show people yeah. the underside. It's very interesting. It's Absolutely. interesting to me. So let's uh I'll Kari and I will put it together on Facebook and we'll we'll get a whole crew together if you wouldn't mind and, and we'll we'll just get a donation. I don't know if people want to write a check when they get there to like the Belle Isle Conservancy or just Yeah, that'd be I'll fine. put cash in an envelope and, and hand it to you yeah, and yeah, we'd, a check to the Belle Isle Conservancy would be the, the most ideal. I think there's actually a couple other ways and I'll look into that. Yeah. To donate to the Belle Isle Conservancy. But it's a really neat organization. They're really focused on Belle Isle. How about one o'clock on June fourteenth? We already we already decided on that date. <laughs> yeah. What's that? What? Fifteenth. Fifteenth? Fifteenth? Yeah. What did I say? Yeah, fourteenth. You, you said, You're yeah. always gotta contradict me. <laughs> yeah, my son's getting we'll take, we'll my take my that. son's getting married on the fourteenth. Oh, so. really? Yeah. And then it's your birthday on the sixteenth. Yeah. Holy yeah. Yeah. God yeah. damn. <laughs> this is gonna be the greatest weekend ever. Greatest weekend of all yeah, time. Man, uh, hopefully I'll be heading to Alaska in uh, mid July. So I'll, Where are you going I'll to retire. In Alaska? I'm just gonna go to Fairbanks and Prudhoe Bay and down to uh 
Seward and Anchorage and sure. back up. So it should be about a three-month, 10,000-mile uh, trip. Oh. I've always wanted to go to Alaska ever since I got my driver's license at 16, and right. I now have the capability of doing it. Oh, see, that, congratulations. That was, actually, that was my next question. I was, I was just wondering, like, yeah, what, what, what happens when you retire? Alaska. Yeah. 10,000 miles. I, I'm ready. <laughs> That's what's up. I'm absolutely ready. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you coming out here, uh, telling us, giving sure. us a little bit of the history of the fountain. Uh, so 1 p.m. June 15th, I'll set it all up on Facebook. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it, we'll keep in touch and, and get all that set up. Nolan, thank you very much for coming as well, bro. Uh, hopefully you will be there as well as the successor to the fountain's yes. uh, the, inner workings. The, the, the Game of Thrones. Right. Yeah, of, there you go. The Game of <laughs> Fountain Thrones. Car, you got anything? Anything coming up? Uh, no. Just sleep. Yeah, word, dude. I tell <laughs> EJ, Kari's a new father yeah, too, so yeah. we, we talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Thank you so man. much, and and yes, he he uh he is great, and he's also the bane of my sleep. Yeah, well, God love them. Yeah, yeah, they're they're wonderful, wonderful things. Those babies. Well, if you're listening, help us <laughs> help Kari buy a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> buy a t-shirt. TheDetroitLocal.com slash shop. Download, rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, uh, SoundCloud. We're on the website, all over the place. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we interviewed Andrew Yang. That's still up there. Uh, it's been kind of our, our highest hit episode so far. Um, also, check out Dine Drink Detroit. Scott is giving away tickets to all the big events. Email at Dine Drink Detroit. Uh, yeah, man, until next time. Appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much. Never Thank die. You. Yeah. What? Never <laughs> die. <laughs> okay. It's going. I just. Yeah. Uh, 30 minutes just like that, eh? Yeah. Hopefully, we can get.